Hello and welcome to Tutorial to You. My name is Yannick and in this video I will show you what constructors are, how you can use them and why they can be super super important. Now first of all we need a class. Awesome. So a class car has appeared now and we have three properties, right? Public string make, public string model, public int year. So we have a simple class with some properties. And what you can see right here is a method which gets called as soon as we create an instance of the object and that's the so-called constructor. Now if we want to create a constructor like this we simply have to write down public car. If your class would be an invoice you would write down public invoice. So it's like a method without a name. So if we create a car, let's call it car and we say new car well, in that moment, we are creating an instance, right? So new will create a new object of type car. And that process is called instantiation. Now, in that moment where we create a new instance, the constructor will get called and will create slash initialize the object. What you can see right here is a parameterless constructor. Well, in the moment we create that object, we can simply assign some values. For example, we can set the make to unknown, we can set the model to unknown, and we can set the year to zero. We could for sure also put different values inside here. Let's do that real quick. Let's say it's a Toyota, and the model is Camry, and it's years 2022, for example. So now we assign some default values. So if we take a look at our program right here, and let me just set a breakpoint in line 10, let me start the application. You now see that the breakpoint will stop the application if I hover above car. Fold that out here, you can see that we have a Toyota Camry 2022 without setting the values inside of our program.cs. No, the values or the value of the properties was assigned inside of the constructor. So as I said, just keep in mind the constructor is that moment where we can really initialize the object. All right, now let's take it to the next level. Let's talk about parameterized constructors and the true power of constructors. But before we move on, let me just pull something over from my second screen. Well, do you know what this is? This is your best way to accelerate your c -Sharp career. It's called the c -Sharp Progress Academy. It's a self-paced online course that teaches you full-stack web development using c -Sharp, ASP.NET Core, Angular, unit testing, and even c -Sharp patterns with a 14-day money-back guarantee and I'm absolutely sure that this is the best way on how you can progress as a C-Shop developer to get hired as soon as possible. Make sure to check it out. You can find the link in the description below or popping up right now at the top right corner. All right, so let's continue here. And please subscribe to our channel because if you're interested in C-Shop and .NET, you don't want to miss any of our upcoming .NET related videos which help you to become a better software developer. So subscribe to our channel right now and never miss out again. Well, basically, if we now create like 100 cars, each of them would be a Toyota Camry. Well, that's probably not really what we want, right? So in that scenario, it would be awesome if we could just create a car and say, okay, yeah, I want to have a Toyota and the model should be like Camry and the build year or something like that should be 2022. And then I can create another car. Let's simply call it car two. Let's make it the Mercedes. There we go. Just make an SLK, whatever. Doesn't really matter too much, right? 2010, there we go. And now you can see that we're not able to do that, right? And that's for sure because our car right here, the constructor has no parameters. So if we could send something over into the constructor here, so in the moment where we create that object, that would really be super handy. And that's called a parameterized constructor. So what we can do is like we can set values which we want to use for initialization. For example, make model and year. Please see the difference between the name of the property, which is an uppercase parameter, which is written in lowercase because it's very important when we assign the values, you know, we take our property and we assign the value from our parameter. And we will do that with all of them. Model, there we go. Same for year. Now we have it really kind of dynamic, right? So whenever we provide values, you can now see, oh, we created Toyota Camry and then we create a Mercedes SLK. 
Great, so keep in mind, this is called a parameterized constructor. Now maybe you have already known a lot of this before, that's good, but now let's move on to why constructors can become super, super crucial and important. Let me just clear the code right here and replace it with a new class. Now here we have a new class which is called bank account. It consists of two properties, account number and balance. Now please see that the property is set to private set, which basically means that the value of the property can only be set from inside of the class. This is why we have two methods provided here, deposit, which is increasing the balance for sure, and withdraw, which is for sure, well, decreasing the balance. Now, why is the constructor here so important? In some applications, or well, pretty much very often, you need to make sure that an object has a valid state so that it gets created in a very specific way. I know that sounds complicated, but I will show it to you just in a second. Just keep in mind that we have a valid state and an invalid state. Now, as the application's owner, I don't want my users to be able to create invalid bank accounts. So if I create a new bank account right here, let's say bank account, let's simply say account equals to new bank account. There we go. I cannot do it that way. Why? Because I have to provide an account number and an initial deposit. And that is our defined valid state. So we are defining the valid state. I cannot create a bank account without any number and any funding, right? So I have to say, okay, the number is one, two, three, four, and the initial funds or the initial deposit, let's say is zero. That would be totally fine. So those fields are required. They are not optional. Everything else would be an invalid state. So this basically, so in that way, so you can see, we can make sure that we can only create an instance of that class in a valid state and we are deciding how the valid state looks like. In our scenario, we need an account number and an initial deposit. If it would be an invoice, we would need an amount of that invoice, a client name, for example, and a date time. So that could be a nice valid state for an invoice. Alrighty, and that's it for this video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you no longer miss any upcoming c -Shop and .NET related videos. And if you are serious about your career, check out our c -Shop Progress Academy. As I said, you can find the link in the description below because it really helps you land a job faster. So thanks for watching and I'll see you back in the next video.